Hey guys, it's time to talk to you regarding the brilliant service that is Anchor.fm. It's a free podcast hoster that gives you access to creating your very own podcast. You can download for free on your phone, tablet, or computer, and you can create and edit directly from your device. And the best part? You can make money. We all want money. Anchor.fm or the Anchor app on your mobile device. The fuck is that? This is Bleach Talks. I like it. <laughs> Huge news. Uh, Manchester City banned from European competition, effectively the Champions League for two seasons. Still... Lacazette. Ojo. <laughs> Slab head and VAR for the win. Arsenal win a game. And Brexit PSG are finished? <laughs> This is Bleach Talks hosted by Jonathan Martinez. You can follow me on Twitter at Johnny2Martinez. I'm going to start the podcast off solo. And then for part two, I'm going to be joined by a very special guest. But first, let's talk about Brexit PSG, the other team from Manchester. Hmm. That's right. We're going to talk about Manchester City, who were banned for two years by UEFA from all European competitions. So that includes the Champions League and the Europa League. And as someone who doesn't really care for Man City, oh, whoever whoever's listening and hates Man City or is not a Man City fan, you should be happy, ecstatic, because Man. I wanted to say, oh, I'm gonna say, it, fuck Man City, because they have literally bought the way their way into all these championships and us predicting them to win the champions league and win the title three times in a row and win this and win that they get whatever they want and they've been breaking ffp for nearly a decade now arson wenger said it in 2000 i believe he said in 2011 that real madrid and psg and city with the money they're spending are going to break all these rules and 10 years later they get banned, or at least one of them does. City gets banned. And this is amazing. Why? Because there's a lot of teams that struggle. Teams like United, teams like Arsenal, teams like, not Chelsea because they still have the funds, but teams um, like Dortmund, teams like sleeping giants like Lyon, Marseille, who don't get to compete or aren't able to compete in their league for at least for the time being because of these monopolies that these owners impose on their on their teams. It's ridiculous that they get to spend as much as they want without reporting their right sponsorship money, which is why they got banned because they were over they were overstating their sponsorship um, revenue, and with that breaking FFP, there's possible point deduction in the prem coming, which we'd love to see. And then I think the biggest news probably for most teams, um, who or if you're a fan of a team in the prem, is that. Do do fit do City finish in the top four, which they will. Fifth place will actually get the Champions League spot, which don't we we all love, of course we all love. Now don't get me wrong, me as an Arsenal fan, I don't think we'll make that spot just because we're really far behind and we've had a abysmal season. But there's always a chance. But for teams like United, Tottenham, Sheffield, who are doing a great job, Wolves. Chelsea already in it. I think they'll finish, but who knows? They have a real shot of getting Champions League football. So it makes the season, maybe the Prem, the entire Prem, just more enjoyable to watch now because all those teams in that little hole between 5th and like 11th, 12th, there's an 8-point difference. It's not a lot. So shout out to Man City. And uh, yeah, fuck them. Um, and off the back of that, I'm going to talk about the game that I just finished watching, which was United taking on Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. It was, I don't know, is the word good game? Was it a good game? It was a, it was a decent game. One that I actually felt like Chelsea would win because they've been relatively strong in um, in games where they're under the pressure. You know, they had when they had Tottenham and Arsenal in the same week, the pressure was on Lampard, and he 
and he and he got it done twice in a row in the same week. That was impressive. Today they only had one shot on target out of 17 shots. So, I mean, they had a lot of possession, but clearly that did nothing for them. It looks like Ole has Lampard's number. He's done the double over him this season in the Prem, 4-0, then 2-0. After what we thought, you know, we we had thought that after that 4-0, the first day of the season, that, you know, Lampard's been, been doing a great job with his young team. But he's he just has these moments in these games sometimes where he just, you don't know if he sets up wrong. Maybe his players have the wrong attitude. But I know I, I, I think he just got it wrong today. They have a really, really solid midfield. And unfortunately, they lost Conte within the first 10, 12 minutes. But, you know, regardless, they still have a solid midfield. And they just couldn't get it done. Lampard, I don't know what it is about him. But he, I mean, you could tell he's a young coach starting out. It's only his second season technically as a, well, yeah, it's second season. Last season, he was managing Derby County, almost got them promoted. And this season, he's had his great, I mean, they're in the top four. Don't get me wrong. They're in the top four. But it's like there's there's not much team. The league started out very poor. Like, like look at Tottenham. Look at Arsenal. Look at United. Way out of where they should be. Tottenham's lock, knocking on the door now. But they're they're all doing very poor. So, yeah, it's very possible that Chelsea just ends up bottling completely um yeah but we could talk about the fact that Maguire probably should have been sent off I know in the interview after he said that that he was trying to catch him and blah 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 but I'm like at the same time I get that maybe it was accidental but he still flung his he flung his studs like right at him and where it doesn't feel so good um look I don't I don't know if anybody's ever tried to catch someone that way I don't know if it's in, instincts but he probably should have been sent off. And he ended up scoring the second goal. He ended up scoring the decisive goal. So, you know, it almost reminds me of the uh, Chelsea-Arsenal game that happened in December, in the end of December, where Arsenal were up 1-0. And Jorginho, on a yellow card, in the middle of the pitch, just pulls back and doozy, which in every referee's book is a yellow card because it's a, it's a pull. He's trying to pull him from counterattacking. It's a yellow card. He was not given a yellow card. And he ended up scoring the tying goal. <laughs> so, I mean, these refereeing decisions, don't get me wrong, Chelsea was still winning, but it changes the game when a player would have been sent off and you would have got to attack a team without a center back. And it completely changes the game. Um, Next one I want to talk about is a game that I thought was going to be really entertaining. I mean, it had its entertaining moments. But Wolves and Leicester, um, I... I expected so much better, so much better, but it it started off really boring and slow, and then they has like a five minute period of Triore and Madison both both you know be shining for their team. Jimenez, uh, I don't know if Jimenez had a stinker, but he was quiet, more quiet than usual, because I don't know if the way Lester set up was just not allowing him to, or he just wasn't feeling on the day. Troy was winning a lot of channels for them, but both teams really just couldn't get it done. Um, and it was a letdown. It was a huge letdown because I expected so much more from that game because, you know, it's the two best teams that tied probably the best, the top six, as they say. Um, and then one other thing that we don't want to talk about, unfortunately we have to, is that Liverpool win again. They are just unstoppable. And I'll tell you what, they're not hard to create chances against, but to create chances against, sorry, but they're just unbeatable. Like they don't create dozens of chances. They create perfect clear cut chances that are almost impossible to save. And they are by far the best team on the planet currently. I don't see any team beating them over two legs. So like, for example, I don't think Atletico Madrid will do it over two legs. I think they can maybe shock them in game one. I just don't think over two legs anybody can knock out this team currently. But who knows? Who knows? Um, we'll have a prediction for that later on the second half. So if you if you care to listen to that, you can stay tuned. But yeah, it was a, uh, I believe, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but the goal scorer was... 
Sorry for the delay here. It was Sadio Mane, who I think is probably one of the most underrated players on the planet. But I'm really tired of seeing Liverpool win. I think everybody's tired of seeing Liverpool win. I think it's really frustrating that the one team that's probably capable of uh, stopping them is totally in the mud right now. I'm looking at you, Brexit PSG, because you're really pissing me off. And now, before the break, or not the break, but before the second half of the show, I wouldn't call it a half, I'd call it a part. Let's get into Arsenal, who won a game. Not only won a game, didn't concede. Not only didn't concede, scored more than three goals. One by four goals. 4-0. I was shocked. As an Arsenal fan myself, I know, I know, it sucks, unfortunately. We we were really good. We were really good. Uh, maybe not the first 30 minutes. I mean, I think we were decent, but you got to remember, Newcastle sets up in a low block five. They play in a five. You know how those teams that play five but play like a three when they're attacking, kind of like Conte's teams, the, the Chelsea team that won the title a couple years ago? Those type of teams? No, no, no. They don't do that. They play a full-on five defenders at the back. Danny Rose was getting booed the whole time. Experts player. It was hilarious. Sam Maxima was probably the most dangerous player. The selection was quite surprising, and the fact that Enkedia started over Lacazette. I wasn't surprised Lacazette got dropped because he was qu- quite poor recently, but I expected Martinelli to play up front or for Aubameyang to play up front and Martinelli shift out wide to the left. That one and Ceballos playing at um, one of the two holding mids with Shaka instead of Torreira I thought was a bold move that I didn't see coming. Um, I think we were slower in the first half because we didn't we didn't um, we didn't do what we were doing recently where Aubameyang tucks in as a forward, Saka moves up. We didn't do it till it's the second half, and brings me on to my next point about Bukayo Saka, 18 years old, and I don't see a better English left back in the country currently, and that's not biased. That's that's genuine. I genuinely think he might have a shot at making the Euros team, just because England doesn't really have a great right back. Well, I mean left back, sorry, um, and I don't think I don't think they'll end up playing right back at left back. I think they they have a really good left back in the making and and Bukayo Saka who again only 18 which is ridiculous the the future he has ahead of him and he's still only on his 3,000 pounds a week contract at Arsenal because he still just came from the academy so hopefully Arsenal can sign a new contract with him soon um, because we need that because where everybody else sucks basically we we grew into the game slowly um Towards the as soon as the second half started, you could feel the intensity. Uh, it wasn't anything technically. Tactically, we really did different. No subs or anything. We just we just played different, more intensity. Uh, first goal game from a Pepe cross. Who Pepe was brilliant. He got a goal, two assists, and showing everybody because Arsenal fans know the talent on this guy, but everybody else doesn't because people only look at stats and think that's what makes a player, and it's not. But he. Literally every game, he he does crazy things. And then this game finally shows up on the stat sheet until everybody pays attention. But he was even more brilliant today. Putting in crosses left, right, and center. Scoring on a sack of Meg. After Saka Meg, two players. Or sorry, he made one, but went between two players. Plays it. Uh, cut back, back to Pepe, who finishes brilliantly. Same, similar to his goal against United. And then fucking Ozil. Scored a goal. Mesut Ozil scored a goal off of a Lacazette assist who had just been subbed on. He had just been subbed on. He assists Mesut Ozil. Lacazette and Ozil, the two most probably out of form. Not out of form, but just they're just not hitting what they're capable of recently. And they... Oh, Mesut Ozil. I was shocked. I was really shocked. Um, so once Ozo makes it 3-0, I was completely in disbelief that this was Arsenal that was playing. And I thought, wow, this is the first time we've been done done this in a while. And then in the 94th, I believe, 93rd, Lacazette scores two. 
And I'm over here going absolutely crazy on my couch because this man has failed to score since December and he hasn't scored a goal away from home in a year. Still hasn't because it was at home. But that you could see the excitement in his face when he scored that, wow, this is my first goal since December. He's been getting criticized. He got benched today for it. And you're just, just really happy for him. Um, do I think this team will make a Champions League uh, spot race? I don't think so. Personally, I think it's too far off. I think it's, I mean, it's only like eight points, but you, every single team in front of us would have to bottle and we would have to not drop points. So it's really hard, but I mean, it is still February. We still got maybe what, three months to go. So anything is possible. Um, obviously as an Arsenal fan, you'd hope that they do get it done. I think the only way, but personally, I think the only way we'll get back in there is through the Europa League, and we have to get past Olympiacos first, and then we can't forget there's teams like Inter, United, um, Ajax are in there in the Europa League, so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a hard one. It's gonna be a tough one, but I think we can possibly do it, and that's not the bias talking. That's the hope, and it's also the hope that kills you. So, but yeah, that's gonna wrap up the first part of the podcast because I'm going to get. A special guest on for part two so just a little commercial break i don't know if it's a commercial break but you know just some just some cool little music in there and uh, we'll be right back welcome to part two of the bleach talks footy podcast i'm joined by carlos crad you can find him on Instagram at Carlos Crod underscore Crod. How are you doing today, mate? I'm doing good. How are you, please? Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. We had a rental last night. Oh, my, my knees, my legs, my, my calves, <laughs> my quads. My heart was pounding, but it was okay. I got thrown into the wall. Oh, yeah. I was, was about to was mention fun. that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start the second <laughs> half by talking about your lovely, dovely Tottenham Hotspur. Wow. Um, yesterday, which was Sunday, the, I believe the 16th, right? Yeah, the 16th, the Spurs traveled to Villa and they yep. won 3-2. Yep. In the last minute, in the dying, the dying minutes, how did you see that game? Well, I didn't see it live, but mm -hmm. I actually did a, I saw the recap and we got very fortunate with that last goal <laughs> well yeah I, it yeah. was an exquisite finish from sun of, of course, course. Human but crud. like he said it he, he they didn't play well yeah but, uh Aldevile scored a goal scored two goals actually he did <laughs> one on his own goal one on the opposite goal and that is correct i was yeah, but ask, is none of them the striker played. now all of a sudden none of them played yeah good they're yeah. they're pretty it's just Villa, so it's nothing really. Do you think special. it was? Do you think it was lucky or was it deserved? Because I think it they was, were still it, way better than Villa, but uh, yeah, they were way better, but it, they weren't lucky. They and it wasn't it, deserved. Yeah. I don't know. It's just but like, awkward. But if Villa would have won, it's like, eh, you know, you can't blame. Like you can totally blame Spurs for it because they should have performed better. And definitely. yeah, they definitely got lucky with with that little miss. So for those who didn't watch, the, the defender literally, I think they just passed it back. No, or was passed it like a long ball? And then he tried to trap it, and then that yeah, he just misjudged totally. it, and yeah, it went right under it. him. And then Spurs went. I mean, Sun went all the way through. And then, I think it was there was 30 seconds left. No, it was 90, literally like about 90, to finish. Like 93, 45, around the 15 seconds left. Yeah. And uh, obviously, Spurs are climbing up the table since Mourinho was appointed uh do you think they will make the top five i think so we're we'll probably with consideration this. obviously the top five is champions league now it's because of man city because of yeah. Bre 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 the psg but yeah. um do you, you you see them making top five i think they do uh yeah. Mourinho wants to get something maybe if it's not a trophy that fifth place will be a really good win for the season trying to get Champions League next season because I don't think we're going to win it this year. <laughs> well, yeah. But... I mean, they still the thing is they still, they still have to play... Let me see. they got to play Palace, which is actually a hard game. Leicester, Newcastle, North London Derby, and Arsenal. Oof. Bournemouth is an easy game. Everton will be a hard game at that point because they'll be probably more solid. Sheffield will be a hard game for sure. Sheffield West is really good. 
West Ham probably be a little easier. Um, United, and then you got Leipzig in the Champions League, which we'll oh talk my. about later. Uh, Burnley, which is just annoying to play against. Uh, you got Wolves and Chelsea still left, and then obviously, yeah, so that's it. So it's a it's a tough schedule, but the good thing is you no longer have City and Liverpool to play, mm-hmm. which is yeah. uh, always great. Always Monopoly great. FC. Yep. Monopoly, Monopoly Chester. Monopoly Chester. We'll talk <laughs> a little bit. I have, I have a couple questions actually about that. Um, next, we're actually going to transition out of the league, uh, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about La Serie A. I know oh. it's Italian, not French, but I'm still going to say it that way. Um, Lazio, who were in third place going into this game, Inter, who were in, in first, actually. Well, they, yeah, pretty much. They were tied with Juve. Um, Lazio, who have Chio Immobile, who's one of the most informed strikers in the league. I believe he has 26 goals in the league. They went down to a goal by Ashley Young. <laughs> Inter Washed. with a team full of Premier League not wouldn't say flops, but I'd just say players who were deteriorating in the Prem. You know, yeah, Lukaku, they needed Moses, a change. Alexis, Young, um, Ericsson, right? Ericsson was a little bit, well, mainly because he wanted to leave, but not really because he was bad. Um, how did you see that? Uh, how did you basically feel about this game? Was it like emotional? Was it boring? Was it like, ah? It was well, actually a pretty good game to watch. I was cheering on Shiro. I wanted him to get his little hattie I thought he was going to get. Easily could have had a hat trick. Easily could have had it, yeah. Easily had two obvious chances, but he mm-hmm. didn't capitalize, which is okay. They still got the win. Right. But I was cheering on Lazio just because Inter, I know they're going to they're gonna bottle it, and I just have a little grudge against Ericsson, so I kind of want to see them fail, but it's going to be a tight race. Are, with, with the move of Ericsson going to Inter, do you think Inter are Spurs in disguise? Just ballers or what? Um, no. Can't no? compare them. Nope. Okay. But they they are bottling. They are, but they're still really close. They're not out of. Oh well, yeah. They're really well, close, but I think Lazio and Juve are are gonna come out top. One of them at least. Mm. I don't know. I mean, cause I don't know. I know we're not to be talking about Juve right now, but the fact that Sari is a okay. I don't know if he's a bad coach. I just don't think he fits that Juve team. So the fact that they're still up top makes me lose a little respect for that league. But I you know. But right now, at least the, the top three are at least quality right now. Um, and then a controversial question actually is like, with that league being as close as it is, is it? Would you say it's better than the Prem? Because I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, the Liverpool's margin is what 25, 22 points ahead. But like, you could still watch like eighth versus ninth, and it'll be. And it'll be quality compared to if you watch something from City. That's my opinion. Like I'll think the title race is close for the first time in a while, but but you know, it's like it's still not as entertaining as the other ones. Just this one game, you know. Yeah. And then basically the question, what I was going into about like Ashley Young and Lukaku is like, do those players coming into this league make it look weak and like performing basically? Mm, I think Lukaku still. In his prime, even though he's not scoring goals left and right as he used to, but I think he's still in his prime. He still has something to prove. But if they let go of Lautaro, his little partner in crime, mm. then it could his downfall could be going way more. But yeah, because then we'll just pair him with Alexis. Who yeah, and he doesn't great. want to be paired up with him. Exactly. But I think I don't know. I think it makes it look it doesn't make it look bad, but it does, it's not the best league in the world. Right. I think. I think the right. Bundesliga is like second oh, yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, I it's better been. than City, yeah, in my opinion. I would have covered a game from there if there was any like really good ones, but there wasn't. There wasn't. Um, and then uh, we can actually get into UCL predictions. We're not gonna go like the full the full throttle. We're gonna go the first four games from this week. And we're going to talk about the first leg, but you can predict the, the tie if you would like, because I'm not completely sure on some of these. But the first one up is Liverpool traveling to Madrid to play Atleti. How do you see the first leg going? Oof. This isn't an easy, I hate to say it, mm. but Liverpool will win this one. And it's just because Atletico is coming off a 2-2 with Valencia that I, I happen to witness. And... 
Yeah. They weren't looking too promising. The defense is still really good, but to get two goals from Valencia is kind of scary because right. Liverpool is gonna they're gonna at least score three on them. Really? And, yeah, they're gonna score at least three, and I think Atletico doesn't even get one because they're I, just not firing up top. I not. I disagree with a portion of it. I would say that at home, Atleti will shut out Liverpool. But they also won't score. I think it'll be a zero zero. You think it'll be a zero zero? I think they're so boring, but it works, right? And then yeah. if you've noticed, if you've seen Liverpool, they're really good. But the one thing they don't do a lot is create like th- like a billion opportunities. Like they don't they don't come at you like City do. They don't they don't create chance after chance after chance after chance. <laughs> um, they're just really clinical when they do. They create they don't create a lot, but they create the best chances pretty much. Um, and that's something that's really hard to do against Atletico Madrid. Yeah. To play such a low block and such a, def- a it's such a defensive team. unit. Yeah. Yeah. And who can kill you on the counter because they have you know they got Carrasco back now. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they got a they got a good they got a solid team going forward, and obviously even better going back. So, I think the tie will be won by Liverpool at Anfield. But I don't okay. think I don't. This first leg, I think Atleti will somehow let me, manage. Let away. me let me not say three zero. I want okay. If Liverpool wins the first leg, it'll be one zero. Mm. Just how they managed to win the. Uh, who did they play? The, um, who? <sighs> Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah, they just played someone. In, they oh. played Southampton. No, no. Who was Norwich? Norwich. Norwich. Yeah, they yeah. just barely beat them. Only exactly. because Mane got his hundredth goal as exactly. a sub. But that's Liverpool, my point. Like they they don't score a lot of goals. They just get crucial clutch goals, and then like they're they make great good chances. Yeah. So I will take back that three zero, and I'll make it a one zero because that's what I actually have written mm. down. Okay. And if Atletico wins, which they probably won't, it'll probably be a one zero too. So either side one mm-hmm. zero, but I think Liverpool wins the first yeah. leg, and it's gonna bite them, bite them in the ass because. When they get back home to Anfield, I think Atletico does something magical. Really? Yes. I, I think Liverpool this year are going to knock out early. Really? Yeah. That's going to be I, the upset. I think Liverpool will go through just barely on a 1-0 overall. That's mm-hmm. what I think. I don't think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I just do I. Fit. I don't think, yeah, it, it can't. I don't think it'll be. Um, so your prediction is Atleti, Atleti pull something magic in the second leg. Yes. But first leg, Liverpool win it. Liverpool barely. take it. Yeah, barely. Okay. My prediction is that Liverpool, or they, I think it's a draw first game, and then Liverpool narrowly wins it. Um, let's move on to the next basketball game that is Dortmund PSG. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, going to be, I, I have, I this, have is gonna be this is going to be a full on NBA All Star game. Uh-huh. Um, so Dortmund PSG, how do you see this one going? Oh uh, well. Dorman's defense is not the best, but yep. their attacking makes up for that defense because they will score and score and score. Mm-hmm. But they will also let in a bunch of goals. So yep. and it's PSG, so that's yep. not it's not in their favor. But Dorman mm-hmm. are at home, crazy atmosphere in there, mm-hmm. the yellow wall. Right. I think Dortmund I think Dorman loses at home. Really? Yeah. Okay. But PSG. I wonder if Neymar will be back because I don't think he's back right now. He's such I'm a not fraud, too sure. isn't he? Ah, oh, dude. I don't, I don't like know what's up with that guy. I think he plays whenever he wants at yep. this point. Yep. But I think Dorman lose at home. And I think actually PSG takes it. I take he takes they take the series. They're not gonna PSG Dorman's too take young. The series? Yeah, PSG takes the series, but Ooh. the first game they're winning three two. Right. And if there's if it's a tie, it's gonna be a three three goal fest. Okay. Holland and and Sancho on the score sheet for Dortmund. PSG probably has Icardi for a brace, and then mm-hmm. Sarabia maybe. Mhm. First leg at least. It's gonna be a, this one's gonna be probably the most like high scoring. Uh, oh, for matchup. sure. It's definitely gonna be a basketball game. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um. Yeah, I, th- I take PSG winning the first and second leg. PSG wins 3-2 the first leg. Mm-hmm. And I won't even predict the second leg because I, mm-hmm. I just think PSG are going to win. Here's here's my, my prediction. Here's my prediction, okay? Uh-huh. The, um, Dortmund at home are going to play very emotional. So they're going to go at PSG. 
And when I think of the fact that it's most likely, no matter what, going to be a fucking NBA game, right? The the amount of counterattacks, I'm thinking, who has more quality? So, in that term, I I in that aspect, I think PSG will beat them at home okay. by at least two goals. Because going forward, they got talent: Icardi, Mbappe, Di Maria, oh, Sarabia. I didn't even say Mbappe. Oh my god. Yeah, like they got stupid talent. It's ridiculous. Okay. Don't get Dortmund have great talent, but they have potential talent. They have, uh, where in terms of G, PSG, have made talent already, experienced players. Uh, a lot of these Dortmund players haven't actually played in a qualifier of this magnitude, at least against like a team like PSG. Um, Unless you're but, ha- Holland. Yeah, but here's the thing: on the return leg, PSG will find a way to choke it because they are PSG. Yeah, it's happened I think, before. I think I think Dortmund will win. I mean, we'll we'll lose the first leg. I don't say convincingly, but I think it'll be like four two, three one, maybe even like five three. I don't know. You never know with these with these two teams. But the second leg, it'll be similar for me. It'll be similar to what happened with United last season, mm. where they literally had no chance of fucking it up. They had all the odds ahead of them. United didn't even have Pogba, who is definitely their best player. Oh my God. <laughs> they bottled it. Completely. I remember that. <laughs> he bottled it completely. So, yeah. So, your prediction is PSG goes through? 3-2. Ta- uh, Thomas Tuchel returns home and, and beats mm. his old team. Mm. And then my prediction is that PSG win first leg, but Dortmund absolutely – oh, PSG absolutely bottle it. Okay. And then the next one is actually kind of a sleeper in terms of Atalanta and mm. Valencia. Valencia travels to Atalanta first. Mm-hmm. So, what do you envision will happen? Because they're two very decent teams, I would say. They're they're a weird team. They're both weird teams. Where yeah, they're they're considered good. They're, but I they're, feel like they're both they're both the worst of the best. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they're like in they're their league, quote unquote good. You know, yeah. it's just they're just there. It's a gray area. But I think Atalanta is a is a dark horse or is a black horse in this competition, mm-hmm. just because they're not even supposed to be there. Right. Valencia, they they were there last year. Unfortunately, they went to the Europa League, knocking out. And got smacked by Arsenal seven one. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> but I think uh, Atalanta's at home, San Siro. Am I correct? Something like that. And I think uh, Valencia, they gave Atletico a run for the money. They just, like I said, they got a two two draw uh this weekend this past weekend atalanta actually won their game i forgot who they played they they actually won their fixture Mm -hmm. but in my opinion i think valencia wins this they're just more experienced they've been in this champions league before although i think both teams are gonna crash out and probably end up at the europa league oh yeah well no they won't they can't now no they can't they can't huh Yeah. yeah so yeah i think Atlanta loses. I just don't think they got it going. I think Valencia mm. has more of a unit for this type of over, competition. Over two legs, you see Valencia? Yeah, they. I just like what they have going there. Condogbio is a beast in the mid. He's Him and Daniel Vaz are really good on that right side. And I think Valencia wins this 2-1 first leg at Atlanta's, uh, Atlanta's home. And yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure I butchered that, but Valencia will take this 2-1. And, yeah, I think Valencia escapes this matchup and only to knock out next round. <laughs> really? Yeah, they're not They're not going to make it after this. I probably agree. They they will probably get matched up to someone crazy like Liverpool or something if they do match they or they do pass. Here's, so, yeah. the, here's my, uh, my take on this. Atalanta are pretty decent because they have they play a three in the back right so they play kind of like a conte system you know very italian and their front three is papu gomez ilicic or ilicic and it's usually a combination between zapata and muriel um but i'm pretty sure and i don't know if i'm wrong here zapata was sold but I don't remember if it was like from Sampdoria or to Sampdoria. But well mm. I think he but I think he is from some 
from Santoria, actually. But, yeah. But regardless, that's a lethal attack, whether it be Luis Muriel or Zapata, because Valencia aren't very solid defensively. I think they're decent, but they're not very solid, as we they saw. Get, look, look, they, it's, they got they got almost the same team they had last season. Yeah. We saw what that banter ass Arsenal side did to them. They got almost the same team, same coach, I'm pretty sure too. Um, and at home, Atalanta has won games five nil, seven nil, five nil, and those two games were those two five nils were Parma Milan. So two decent teams. They're not bad teams, but they're decent teams. Um, I think at home Atalanta wins it. Uh, fair, just because of this, because I remember last time I saw Valencia get clapped was obviously that Europa League tie. And they got beat not by a whole team because Arsenal wasn't a good team. They got beat by two individual class strikers. They got yeah. beat by Aubameyang and Lacazette. And I think they'll get beat by a trio of Papu Gomez, Zapata, and um, Ilicic. So, That's bold. that being said... I think said, you just hate Atl- no, or Valencia. No, I mean, I kind of <laughs> do. Just kidding. I'm I just kinda kidding. I kind of do, low-key. But, but I think Atalanta wins it at home. Okay. In the return leg, I think Valencia narrows it. Because they are, they so. they get emotional at home. I mean, obviously last year they bottled at home, but I think this year they'll they'll be more emotional for it because they're in the Champions League, not the Europa League, and I think the fans will be up for it. So I think it's a narrow win for Valencia. So I think first leg, two goal two goal difference by Levante, and then second leg, three goal difference by Valencia, something like that, or on away goals. Okay. But it'll be narrow in the in the final in the final tie, and then finally. The one Finally. we've, uh, the one you've been waiting for. Sorry, no, I no, have no. been waiting. I, for I, I, get, I don't care. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> Tottenham Hotspur host Leipzig, RB Leipzig in the first leg. Right back Leipzig at the White Hot Lane. Right back Leipzig. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you see your your lovely Spurs? Well, well um, <clears throat> let me just empty my. Well, this one's gonna be kind of biased for me. On, but man. I'll be unbiased. Okay. RB Leipzig is a really good team in Germany. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Many Germans don't like this team, though. They mm-hmm. just they don't like the club for some reason. Mm-hmm. But they do have a class striker in Timo Werner. Class. World class. World class. They have a bunch of midfielders that pull the strings, like uh, mm-hmm. Campbell. They have... They have a bunch of heads that they're just kind of like underrated, but right. everyone on that club is just they're just crazy. They're just super technical. They're all super fast. Tottenham, on the other hand, we have some business. We need to work on our defense for sure. Right. We need to rebuild the right back and the left back slot. Oh, for sure. Our center backs are kind of shaky right now, but we got a beast of Davis and Sanchez in the back with Vertonghen or Alderweireld. Depends mm-hmm. who they have, but. I honestly think right back Leipzig. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I think they've run away with their first leg, one nil, maybe really? two nil. Yes, away? I think. Yes. Mm. And I, I'm just gonna say one nil, just because Tottenham barely escaped this this last fixture, three two. Mm. They were supposed to tie, in my opinion, but yeah, we got kind of lucky how you were saying. So I think we're we're, we're still not ready. We're still going to be kind of sleeping. And then Dele Alli was atrocious last game. So if he doesn't show up, we were we were probably not going to win this one. And I say if we do lose, we lose 1-0. And if we do win, it's going to be – or I don't think we're going to win. I think it's going to be a 0-0 tie if, if it ties up. But I think right back Leipzig, <laughs> they, beat, they beat us. They beat us the first leg 1-0. But we'll get them back second leg and probably get three on them. On some Lucas Mora cheese or what? Yeah, it's just yeah. that little magic of his yeah. that he has. But I think, yeah, Leipzig wins this one one zero. I'm just gonna keep it real because we're looking a little shaky in the back right now. Yeah. So, yeah, one zero is my prediction. One thing I've um, noticed about Tottenham is that at home they're they're shaky compared to when they go away. Yeah, so like at home, I feel like it's like such a big pressure with that stadium. I don't know if it's just yeah. a stadium, but like they they tend to be more shaky at home, as in like they make a lot of mistakes compared to like when they play. Don't get me wrong, they're not perfect away either, but like they're more disciplined, I would say, when they're when they play away. They play like so, with their backs against the wall. When they're yeah, away. basically, and and um, I think at home, like you say, Leipzig will take it. Okay. I think I think Werner will be too much. 
from the yeah. handle there. Oh my God. Um, but on the return leg, I think the, oh, the thing is that both stadiums have really good atmospheres. They do. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good leg. It's gonna be a, definitely a good tie. I but, think it's like a perfect match for Tottenham, yeah. in my opinion, because they're just like ah, they're just they could be great, mm-hmm. but they just need a few more little pieces, and then yeah. they could, not great, but they could be like way better than they are right yeah. now. I think one thing we're also not talking about is the fact that Mourinho is a Champions League expert. So I think. I think Spurs will go through on a tie, but on a Wakels. So I think it'll be like one nil and then two one for Spurs after, or like, or like two one for for uh, for Leipzig and then like three two for. Burner. <laughs> yeah, shut up, bitch. That's his team. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, his team. He's gonna score the goals. Right back, Leipzig. Um, <laughs> but they got a lot of other players too that could that could do a lot of damage, like Polson, Savitzer, those type of players that are exactly really dangerous. Yeah, so, Savitzer, and he's. He's a fucking yeah. oh my god. We both we both got Spurs going through, unfortunately. Yeah, we do, but you didn't say your scoreline. I said I said one zero first half, uh-huh. RB takes it. Second leg, Tottenham somehow wins it just because they have the away goals and all that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying yeah. too. I think they'll they'll win on the away goals. I think they'll tie, but I think they'll win on the away goals because Mourinho is a master class in terms of yeah, Champions League. Yeah. Um. I don't know if he's out of it. Maybe like I know people. A lot of people say like, oh, he's you know he's an old he's, he's old. It's an old game. He doesn't. That's not played anymore. But I mean, he's still Mourinho. He still has found a way to beat teams still with his Tottenham team. So trophy Mourinho. So we're gonna get on to the questions now. Actually. Um, All right. I got one. I got actually I got like three from Alex, Sir Alex Bustos. One of one, Alex. Uh, okay. his first question is. What do you think about money issues going on in football? For example, with City and PSG having all the money in the world to buy who they want, what are the pros and cons to the situation? Uh, I'll let you answer first if you have an answer. Um, I I don't like Monopoly, Chester FC, for this reason. They're just right. Brexit club, PSG. <laughs> they're just I don't know clubs in general that have this much money. I think this is why RB Leipzig is not really like yeah, for this thing. reason. Because yeah. they, they just don't have, have the same amount of money, but they still have a lot of money. Yeah, like they bought basically their whole squad and mm-hmm. they just worked their way up each division, yep. which is kind of yep. like it's kind of like unfair because there's like actual clubs that started from the bottom, I guess, and just like you know, like Spurs. <laughs> right. But like, but like realistically, it's just like you just buying teams just like that is like kind of mm-hmm. paying your way into like champions. Obviously, you still got to make it work. You got to get the coaching and all that. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of variables to it, but for the mm-hmm. most part, you could really buy class players and make it work just like right. that. Right. And I'm I'm kind of like in between because I I've, I've never been like super into like those big teams like PSG, Manchester right. City, like you know, all those like super rich teams or yeah. Barca, Real Madrid. But I think I mean, if they have it, they're obviously going to be able to use it so at the same time you can't really hate on them for that but right. it does suck that money does talk and money does like kind of it doesn't guarantee you trophies because look at psg but right but well, it guarantees I mean, them a league trophy that they would have won anyway but yeah i guess <laughs> yeah it, i mean they'll they'll get a little trophy or some yeah. silverware but it doesn't always guarantee it which is right. the good part of it just because like i mean there has to be a bad, a bad side about it but right. for the most part i don't think it's a fair Thing, but also it's unavoidable just because money do you, rules the world. Do you think there's any pros like to it? Pros? The only pros, in my opinion, I see is just the silverware. You get the silverware and then, like, right. you obviously get a bigger fan base and just the club grows and stuff. But, mm-hmm. like, I I don't think I'm, I'm like, really with it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm just kind of just there. I'm just like, well, whatever, you know. The, um... but, the only pros I really see in it are in terms of the Champions League. So, like, in terms of, like, you get more... Um, a lot of the matches are, like, blockbuster matches now because of the teams that have grown. So, like, mm-hmm. when you have... City, like, City, Real Madrid 15 years ago, you'd be like, huh, huh, what? Real Madrid goes through easy, <laughs> right? You know, you have teams like PSG who... They were good maybe 15 years ago, but they weren't, they weren't like, a monopoly on their league. There was still Lyon... Uh, you know Montpellier, Marseille, teams that are teams that were still in that on that same level, but I mean, yeah. PSG was always just a slight level ahead. Um, teams like RB Leipzig, so like before it'd be like German teams, okay, Dortmund and Bayern, that's it. But RB Leipzig has joined and made like a made it more so like when a Leipzig matches up with with Tottenham now, we get like whoa, 
is a good matchup compared yep. to like if that happened 10 years ago wouldn't be a good matchup team doesn't even exist right so that's the only pro i see and all the cons i see are that first of all it totally puts a like um th- no one's gonna remember city psg as historic oh i guess they'll remember as historic record teams but you know manchester isn't going to be blue all of a sudden it's not going to change it's they didn't grow they didn't grow as a club. They literally purchased everything. It demoralizes the hard work that's actually been put in. So, like, so all this money being spent, there's still coaches working hard. There's still the club working hard to make sure these coaches are the right fit. They make sure they buy the right players. It's a really well-run club at City. But it it basically, all that money that's spent basically, I, don't, I wouldn't say, like, cancels it out. But it just, it's not going to be appreciated because, like, you wouldn't have all this facility and all this staff, all this great stuff with all the money. It's um and it's getting to the point now. Obviously, where we, I talked about it earlier, but City got a ban for it. PSG uh-huh. would probably end up getting a ban for it. Um, I think I think um I think more teams now are gonna start getting these bans. Uh, mainly because Sir Arsene Wenger is now working at FIFA, but that's another topic of discussion. But um. <laughs> But, you know, these teams that are just buying their way into the Champions League, buying their way into these transfers, like overpaying for transfers, you know, like City definitely overpay for transfers. PSG definitely overpay for transfers. Barca and Madrid also do, but they've kind of created that stature. They've had it forever. So it's like, yeah, they I, don't, did. I don't know if they kind of get a pass, but it's like it's like it's not like they like all of a sudden were were owned by or bought out by an oil company. You know, it's not like that. It's different there. Um, and then. We're going to move on to the next question from Alex, and that is, Hold on. who do you... Go ahead. Right before you get into the other question, like how you said Real Madrid and Barca, like they get the pass technically. Yeah. I mean, those teams are like, they're historically like known, you know what I mean? Yeah. The winning team. So like, it's yeah. kind of like a dream for players to go to a Barca or Real exactly. Madrid. Exactly. No one dreams I mean? about it's, going to City and PSG. Yeah, like yeah. not really because, I mean, just for other than the money wise, you're going to dream about going. But if, like just historically speaking like how barca and real madrid are two like for the biggest clubs in like right. the world and like right. probably will be forever and ever right i think it's like i think it's way better like that's the, they get the pass in a way because they they have the money because they're such a popular team mm-hmm. they're they both have happen to be in spain they're right. rivals you know so i feel like in a way they do get the pass just because like they could sign a big player. They like they right. sign Griezmann. Like they sign like those star players, and they, it mm. looks cool. Like when you see players like at that level join like a team like Barca or Real Madrid, yeah. it's like picking your poison. It's like right. which side are you gonna choose? You know what I mean? Right. So I think for those type of teams that are, like built it from the like ground up and they've had a bunch of history of just winning and that mentality, then it's a good thing. I think. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um. Actually, I'm just going to go on to Braulio's question. Braulio, I had a question about um, about Barca Madrid, actually. He said, do you feel like big teams like Real Madrid and Barcelona sort of ruin the competitive side of football? And I'm going to answer first, actually. I think no, because first of all, there's always been teams that beat them. And second of all, there's teams that are probably better than both of them currently in the Champions League. Um, I think what he means, I think what he means is that like before when Messi and Ronaldo and the Guardiola Mourinho era, when they yep. were so dominant and nobody else would win anything, I think it 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 didn't ruin it, but it was almost like it was almost like, hmm, I mean, which one of the two are gonna win? It wasn't ever or like who could stop them, but it wasn't yep. ever like who can win it this year. Besides, you know, it was always like it was always um it was always one of those two, but I don't think it ruins football because you know we want to see good teams, we want to see teams break barriers and break records. So I don't think it necessarily exactly. ruins football. Uh, do you would you agree or do you have a different take? No, I agree with you. I don't think it ruins it. If anything, it makes the whole world better. It just I think it, I think it makes everybody else better because they're gonna want to be. Yeah, they're gonna strive to be at that level. Yeah, and if not, they're gonna try to make their teams like. I mean, every every team or every club wants to be a Real Madrid or a Barca. You know, they yeah. all they're all striving to be at that. Like they want to get all the trophies. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I get it. I, like, it looks unfair and stuff, but in soccer, it's just... Yeah. That's the thing. Like, it's always it's always good to have a better... Playing against a better team, just the fact right. that's going to make you better, personally. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to make the whole, like, I guess, the world better. Just the yeah. fact that they they want to step it up and just compete. Mm-hmm. 
But there, that's why there's also like a FIFA World Cup of clubs. They're just right. teams like from Brazil get the chance to play at Real Madrid or, or Barca, you know, that gives yeah. them the opportunity. And if anything, that makes them better. Yeah. But I think that dominance of like how there was once like uh, Real Madrid or that Barca team from yeah. like 08 to 12, you know what yep. I mean? Mm-hmm. Those teams are like legendary. And then I think that they're, they dominated at those four years. But mm. think about it. It's just but they didn't always years. win. Yeah, they didn't always win. Yeah. And Real Madrid right now is not winning. Or they're winning, but they're not Real Madrid they were with Ronaldo. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're they're looking like kind of iffy, which is good. Because, I mean, mm. all good things come to an end. But And they done a fraud. You can't forget that. Oh, my God. Shout, yeah. out, shout, out, shout out, Daniel. They <laughs> done, done the fraud. Yeah, he, he got the easiest three Champions Leagues I've ever seen. I would, but, I would, I would, I would mostly agree. I think he's decent, but, but he's not, he's not, he's not a great coach, I would say. No, but he's a great player. But back to the question of that Brawley had, I don't think clubs like that, it's like, it's not considered unfair, I think. Right. I think it's just a part of the game. There's mm-hmm. always going to be a top dog or dogs, I guess. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just right now, it, it, it doesn't even look like Barca or Real Madrid are like the dominant no team no. and it's no. kind of up for grabs right now like i think at this point right now in the soccer world there's a team or a club i should say well liverpool is probably the closest one to that right now but mm-hmm. i think there's plenty of teams trying to be that team like mm-hmm. real madrid and barca once yeah. were you know so let me think, um let me follow it up with you actually with alex's second question who do you mm-hmm. think legitimately has a better chance of winning the champions league this season and but on that note who do you personally favor to win it who would you right. want to win it? And then who do you think will win it? Want me to answer this one first? You go ahead. So who I will personally want to win it, you already know. I'm lucky. It's going to be uh, – it, it's just going to be – my biased answer is going to be Tottenham, obviously, just because mm-hmm. we're runner backs. And right. we're, we're we're kind of like the slept on team, even though last year was – Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was kind on. of lucky. It was kind of lucky, but at the I same time – I think they're more slept on this season because they nobody – like real – because they've been poor, but they got Mourinho now. So yeah, he can so. he can make shit happen usually. Yep. But, yeah. Um. But yeah, who I want to win personally, Tottenham, of course. Realistically, if Atletico don't knock out Liverpool, I say Liverpool or Man City, one mm-hmm. of those two. Mainly because of the I don't know too much about the transfer ban that's or the transfer ban the champions league ban that's going on with city too much mm-hmm. but what mm-hmm. i do know is that they still are in it this competition right. this year right. so if their if their uh case gets upheld or in it stands mm-hmm. or whatever and they do get banned for two years i think man city are gonna give it their all since right. it looks like the league is uh done for right. and that's why i also think liverpool will knock out just because they got the league in the hand and the, the bag basically mm-hmm. it looks promising but I think uh, an English team will win that Champions League, and I think it might be Man City or Liverpool, in my opinion, one of mm-hmm. those teams. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't think I have really other choice. Maybe like a Barca, but I think realistically, I think it's maybe, an English team. I think Bayern's a little more, more slept on than usual, but I mean they're still good. I don't I don't think they're qual- as quality as they as they once were, but I mean I think they're still a little bit slept on. Yeah. Um, my personal favorite. I would want to win it is actually Barcelona because yeah. I would I would love to see Messi lift the Champions League trophy as captain. Um just because I I would just love that picture, you know. You always mm-hmm. got those people who for some reason think Ronaldo's better, but they're just idiots. Uh no bias. Ronaldo. Um I wouldn't say Ronaldo, I just I just don't think I think he's a, one of the best uh fox in the box <laughs> strikers to ever be, but doesn't make you one of the best players ever. Um personally, but I think Here's the thing. Guardiola is probably going to leave after this season. He, <coughs> to Barca. To Barca. Or as Arteta's assistant. Um, uh, but <laughs> or, or maybe to Bayern. I don't know. But I think Back he's going to leave. I think a lot of City players. I think maybe a couple. Maybe at least three City players are leaving. Like at least three, De Bruyne. Yeah. At least three three really good City players are, I think are going to Sa- leave. Sané. Sané. I think for sure is one of them. Maybe Gabriel Jesus too. Mm. I think it'll be maybe like Sané, uh, De Bruyne, and then Mares personally, but I'm not sure. Um, but I think they are one of the best teams in the world still. But the reason I see them winning it over Liverpool is the fact that, like I said earlier, Liverpool don't create a lot of chances. 
So I think City will overload teams and beat them. I think that I personally, I think, I mean, I know we're not talking about their prediction with Real Madrid right now, but I think they'll blow out Madrid just because oh, yeah. of how how easy they make chances. I, I'm I'm always wrong in terms of Madrid though, but we'll never we'll see. But I think they'll blow them out just because they have so many chances they create. And I don't know if Courtois is gonna be able to handle all that. They got a good a solid defense, but I mean they don't play against City every week, so I think City is the most um, all around well built team to do it. Mm-hmm. I think Liverpool is really solid, but I think they're gonna be so emotional in terms of the league. I think uh, don't get me wrong, I think they'll. They'll they'll rest a couple players in the league to play in the Champions League, but I think their full emotion is still going to be on the fact that they're playing league, and they've been so dominant playing against Premier League style teams that they're not going to expect, uh, you know, when they play against like a Barca. Obviously, like last last season, they could have easily been knocked out by Barca, even though they were better than them. But they could have easily been knocked out by Barca. They could have easily been knocked out by uh, Napoli, not Napoli, um, that team they went to and they barely won. Uh, unless it was unless that was the season before with Roma, but. But like they're 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 beatable. Napoli's beat them this season. It's only been teams outside of Europe that have beat them. Yeah. So you know I think they're beatable outside of Europe because it's a different style, and they don't create as many chances. So I think they'll go out shockingly, like you said, maybe into Madrid. I think they'll go out shockingly, um, mm-hmm. and I think City will win it. But I do want Bar. I want Barca to win it, but I think City will win it. This is why the Ola can go out on a high horse. Yeah, um, that's that's what I was thinking too. Just because there's a lot of speculations that he might leave this season, mm-hmm. so. Might as well mm-hmm. go out with the bang, you know. Right. If he wins it, he says that he won it all and he he's done. He achieved right. it all. But right. then if he doesn't win it, then it's like, all right, I got nothing to lose. I got, I mean, if the if the two year ban stands, then it's just gonna be like, all right, well, I'm not gonna be in this yeah, competition. He's definitely so not gonna stay if, he's, if the if the ban holds. Um, and then uh, the next question from Alex, it's gonna be. Who do you think is the best player in the Prem currently? Just a simple question for you. Mm. I think okay. Let me give you two. Okay. So one of the one of my favorite underrated. I mean, he gets. Oh, talked he actually, a lot. yeah. Give me, give me your most slept on player, and then give me your best player. You would say. Okay, so the best player is going to definitely be a Liverpool player. Mhm. And that thing is going to be, or the thing, <laughs> the right back is going to be. Alexander, uh, Trent, Trent Alexander Arnold. Trent Alexander Arnold. I think he's a really good player, and I think he's like the best right back in the world, the world. right now. I think so. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely he's a he's a hell of a player. He could mm-hmm. run all day. He could cross the ball, literally cross the field just on the platter. But I, I'm sure there's a, there's gonna be other people saying there's a better player. But I, I'm personally a fan of that right the, back. Oh, there will be other people, but uh, that's wrong. Keep going. And then that's just my personal pay, uh, favorite of who I think is the best player in uh, mm-hmm. the Premier League. Mm-hmm. And for the slept-on player, which is not really slept-on because he's he's causing a ruckus over there in Wolverhampton. Oh. But Raul Adama. Jimenez. Oh, I thought you said Adama Traore. But, no. Oh, yeah, that's a, good, that's a good pick, too. That's a good yeah. pick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Raul Jimenez, he's yeah, I'd say so. That club loves that guy. He he's just netting goals left and right for them. I think United would love too. him. Oh my! Any team to get a Raul Jimenez would be lucky. Yeah. They will get goals and yeah, they're clutch goals sometimes. I remember the game against uh, Liverpool. Mm. Oh my God! Him yeah. and Adama tore them up. They did. They did. unfortunately it wasn't enough, but you no, know they they, enough, they caused but... havoc. They co- they created more chances than Liverpool that game. And against Man City too, so yeah, twice. Yeah, twice. and yeah, I think Raúl Jiménez is one of those like slept on players in the BPL. They're just they're just I don't know the Wolverhampton boys. They're just nice. They're just all yeah. well rounded. They're not enough to get maybe top five. What it's looking like right now, but. Right. I think just a little bit more pieces, and they they may be able to squeeze into that top four eventually. Right. right. But yeah, I think Raúl Jiménez is one of my favorite slept on players in the league, in the Premier League. One of the players that I think is really the best player in the league is going to be Trent. But a lot of people will say the the I would say Mane, De Bruyne. You know, they mm. they'll say those big big stars. Right. But right. that's to be expected. They're, those are world class players right there. Trent is a world class player. He's an upcoming youngin. He's from Liverpool, which right. is crazy. Yeah. Homegrown. But who do you think? Um, the best player for me is a tie between Van Dyke and De Bruyne. 
only because Van Dyke is literally the rock of that team because I don't see them being a championship uh, Champions League or Premier League champion team without him. Uh, to your point about your your pick, Trent Alexander Arnold, uh, you have never have you ever seen like Trent, Trent Alexander Arnold be like a shaky defender? Have you ever seen him like fail defensively? Um, not really, right? I want to say I have, but I don't remember the last time I actually saw right. it. That's mainly because of Van Dyke, because Van Dyke is all over the place in terms of like he covers whoever is going up. The reason Trent and Robertson aren't amazing defenders, but that back line of Van Dyke and then usually Mate per Gomez keeps yeah. them in check. And I think it's one of the reasons why they're so good because they're they're basically an evolving team and they're basically the evolving style of football where it's like a four three three you know, two, a one, six, two, eight, and your, your wing backs are more like wingers. Um, and then your wingers are more like inverted forwards. So I think they play that style perfectly. And I think Van Dyke without Van Dyke, they can't do it. Um, okay. I would say, I want to say De Bruyne just cause he's just fucking excellent technically. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't think he, um, he's as important to that team as he, as Van Dyke is to the Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Um, because the de, because de, they still batter teams without him. So, um, and then my most underrated player is actually going to be in the relegation zone or close to the relegation zone, and uh, that's Jack Grealish. Oh, I knew you were saying. Because <laughs> Jack Grealish is he's got fucking calves bigger than the fucking city. Like he's he's his calves are huge. That's that's the only reason his calves are huge. No, but he's <laughs> he's a driving player. Um, he like so he good. carries that that like without him they'd be bottom with Norwich, but he he has like single handedly put brought them carried them through games in the game against Arsenal where they lost three two they should have won that because he created almost everything and I was shocked I'm like yo this kid not kid but like this dude is creating everything <laughs> yeah. he's doing everything he gets the ball from the bottom and he drives with it he can play center mid he can play center attacking mid he plays left wing right now because they play like a three four three but um, I would want to see him in a better in like a top team. I think he'll end up moving to a top team <clears> in the summer because they'll probably get relegated. I think Tottenham's a choice. I think he's better in a team that's like uh, transition wise. So like obviously like Spurs or or like United where like they tra- yep. they they you know because in Villa he's doing a lot of counter, a lot yeah. of defensing than counter. So I think he's yeah I think he's nasty when he gets the ball and he it's really hard to stop because he's so strong and he's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So how tall is he? I think he's like 5'11". Oh, oh, let me shit. check real quick. Uh, check. Yeah, he was working the Spurs this weekend, man. He was. He works. He works every team he plays against. Yeah, it's just I mean, like obviously his team isn't very good. But if he I don't see him at the Euros, people. I'll be disappointed with the English. He should be in the squad at least. <laughs> but yeah. um, no, he's five nine. So he's really he's genuinely a, the average size player, but he's plays like he's massive. Yeah. Um, and then this one is a question from Automatic from Orlando. Uh, it's actually just for you, and it's a what are the tactical differences you see from Mourinho compared to Poch in terms of lineups, formations, tactics, and and after that, um, he says, do you think the team will use the market more? Well, basically, will they do more transfers now under Mourinho? Um, for the market, I think we will definitely sign players. Oh yeah. I think I think uh, Levy or Levi uh, will will yeah Le- Levy will let. Mourinho play with some money and I think he already has some people in mind that I've heard right. and heard speculations about mm-hmm. uh, like that one right back uh, from Norwich, Aaron's right. he, uh, he's on the, I think that's a definite must cop and I do think like I said back, uh, back to the transfer question, I think they will sign at least two or three players, they're not going to be superstars or anything but they will mm-hmm. definitely sign some key components they need they, we need a right. D-mid, we need a right back and we probably need a striker just in case Harry would, Kane gets hurt. Did you again. say you need a left back too, or no? Uh, I'm, I I thought we did, but that man, uh, Tangage or Tangage, I don't even know how to say his name. Tanganga. 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 Yeah, he's yeah. back. He he. Uh, Mourinho really believes in him. He yeah. would, he doesn't even play left back, but Mourinho just sees something he, in him. He does it he very could, well. Yeah. And he's a big guy, so yeah. I think he could hold up that left back. He's position. a very Mourinho he's, style wing back. Yeah, and he's 20 years old, so he has a lot of things going for him. Mm-hmm. But also about tactical, uh, like 
tactical switches and just everything going on in the back room. I think Mourinho just brings that winning mentality. So I think the players are on the same page where they they'll do they'll play anywhere or do anything just to win, which is a good thing. But it's also kind of a bad just because you don't want players not playing in the position that they desire, such as Lucas. He likes playing the right wing, but Mourinho usually uh, inserts him at the striker right now. But I think so far with Mourinho coming to the club, I think it's a really good change. The mentality is going to be better than Pochettino's, but I can't disrespect Pochettino because he did the best he could. He he worked with what he had. But I think it's a totally different play style, and I think Mourinho is actually... I don't think he's going to win anything this year, but I think next year they do some some work and with yeah. some building pieces, I think they'll they'll only get better. Right. Cuz one thing I've noticed is that formation-wise they play exactly the same. Uh yeah. in terms of play style, they they're just more um there's more of a plan in terms of like so I don't think it's as like pretty. It's not as pretty as the Pochettino's football, but it's more mm-hmm. organized. Um so like they're they're like you can see what they're trying to do. Like I noticed when he first got there, they were doing a lot of over the top balls, like really long runs, like to Deli Ali. Um, and it's just more of a it's more of a plan compared to like Poch's football, which is more Arsene Wenger like, where it's more just scattered and try to score more than them. Um, but compared to Mourinho, where it's like he's more. I think he's still got a little bit defensive fragilities, but it'll come with transfers and more time. Um, but yeah, I think it's just more of a plan. Um, and then our our final two questions. One of them is kind of serious. One of them is kind of not. You can guess which one's serious. Uh, Guillermo G, little Guillermo Gonzalez over there. Geronimo. Says, Geronimo says, tell me why America is the best football club in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they're shit, mate. Um, what about you, Cry? What do you think? I agree with that statement. They are the best club in the world. Yeah. I, I, I would say they're uh, better than their uh, rivals, uh, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't want to speak about them, though. Yeah. Also, why do you think uh, soccer, as he says, I'm going to say football, why do you think football is not respected enough in the United States? Uh, well, in the United States, well, this is all my opinion. All right, what I ahead. see, what I see, I, I just think it's soccer or football over here in the States is mm-hmm. considered kind of like a rich person sport in a way. Mm. And the fact that club to get in the club team is pretty expensive. Yeah, pay to play. Pay to play. So mm. it's kind of it's kind of like that's where they get you. And but right. the thing is, it's if you look at it as an investment for yourself, I think it will pay off. Depend, especially if you make it pro or whatever, right. then that money and that charge won't be an issue. But mm-hmm. for the average player that just wants to go play and enjoys playing with his friends, but wants to take it kind of serious at the club level, right. I think it's kind of like iffy. I feel like club, you shouldn't be paying, but at the same time, they need that money for all the equipment and to pay the coaches, I guess. Right. I, I get it, but I think football here in, in America, in the U.S., it's just it's kind of like a rich person sport. Like, I've heard of that term a lot, and it kind of is just because, yeah. like, you need a lot of money just to keep playing club, and it's right. kind of unfair for the, unless uh, the you, players. Unless you get, like, the special talent and you get scouted and then they pay you. But yeah, that's exactly. rare. It's super that's rare. It's rare. a huge country. Yeah, it's rare. And then there's not really a lot of like, well, there is academies, but you got to pay. You got to pay or they're yeah. going to, you have to be really good. But mm. there's so much talent here. Even if, if you have no money, this you could still be one of the best players. And it just yeah. sucks because you won't get that recognition even right. from your hometown. Right. Or just from wherever you and are then, you won't get that and then you got to get really lucky like a lot of the people a lot of the people that um grow up basically without a lot of money and the only way they're ever going to make it is if they get scouted by college and they get a full scholarship that's exactly. literally the only way but usually they college colleges only scout players that are playing clubs that you have to pay for so it's exactly. like a bit of a it's a bit of a broken system and then i would i would add to you everything you just said in the fact that also america grew up with all these sports that were um america's always has a history of being different from everybody else so yeah. while the whole world was playing football, um, they were playing a different form of football and then basketball grew and you know, all these other sports like hockey and that were first, I guess, not first in the world, but they played first. And then when when the real football soccer came into the play, it was a secondary sport. It wasn't like a it, it was like a new sport. It wasn't like something that they originated with compared yeah. to the entire world who was where it was the original sport. 
Um, the thing is, though, yeah. like, like uh, the cool thing is that the like that's happening here in the U.S. is that MLS teams are like giving more like the homegrown, like the people from that area, yeah, an opportunity, which is kind of cool. And there's also yeah. like other like organizations that like let you go, yeah. basically try out or get scouted. Mm-hmm. But it's just kind of like they also require money but like at the same time they give you a, such a big opportunity to like yeah. have a chance and eventually mls is not the greatest league but i honestly think it's it's pretty good i think it, it's, it's good for the country it's but good it's not country, good for like world football it's not it's not gonna prepare you for the international yeah. or the european yeah. style but definitely yeah. it's like if you just don't want to even move out of the country then i think the mls is a good league yeah I mean, but it's like it's easier said than done because right. it's just there's so many good talent in soccer. Like it's crazy. Like mm-hmm. you could be one of the best in your area, but it's like it, it won't be next to like someone from another mm-hmm. state that's like mm-hmm. a college player or right. even a high school varsity player. Like you never know. It's just soccer is just one of those sports where like anybody has the potential to make it big, and it's it's pretty cool and it's interesting. But like the whole like pay to play thing that's where they get you and it's just like it kind of sucks if you don't got the funds for it but at the same time you could also make up for it if you have the skill someone Mm. someone will pay for you or someone will just like be like hey you don't even have to pay because you're so good you know Mm -hmm. there's obviously alternatives but at the same time for the most part it's just pay to play at this point and i hate i hate when people don't want to go play pickup game and just just because they don't want to pay a few bucks but it's like bro like you know it's it's nothing you're gonna yeah. have fun and everything but let's just pick up but like for more serious competitions and it's just i don't know i just think they should change the it's not going to change I, I don't think it will change but it would be cool to see some club teams basically for free that would be changing and you never yeah. know maybe you have more professionals coming out like that just the fact that they don't have to pay mm-hmm. but a lot of those things need funding from somewhere and some yeah. somebody. So until that happens, I don't think that's going to really go away. Not, I, I don't think it will ever go away just because, like, clubs need that money. And, yeah, just they need equipment and stuff yeah. like that, all the little stuff they need. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff we could talk about soccer in the U.S. Mm-hmm. that is not good. So <laughs> much different to everybody else in the world. Um, yeah. Yeah, that pretty much sums up the first footy pod. Uh, I want to thank Crod for being on the pod. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Um, on Thursday, uh, I might, this is a bite, I might make a small podcast in terms of the Champions League football that happens in the next coming days. So just basically what I thought of the games, what I think will happen next leg. And then Friday, we will have the second episode of uh, the standard, basically, Bleach Talks, where we'll talk about something. And I will have a special guest that day who knows who it will be. Stay tuned. Uh, thank you, Crod. Uh, Thank you, Bleach. I'll see you soon. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good, bro. Talks.